Right, up next on the beat, someone who needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him one, because that's the kind of guy I am. Um, made some of the nicest, finest records in pop, some of the sharpest clothes. It's always that legendary haircut as well. Am I doing well? Saying all the right <laughs> things, all the right things. Carry Brian on. Ferry, <coughs> welcome to the beat. Thank you very much. Now, you've just released your first album in about five years, yeah. Taxi, um, a collection of uh, cover versions. I mean, you're no stranger to doing covers. You've done quite a lot from almost sort of like day one. Yeah, 73, was, we did the first one, um, These Foolish Things, it was called. And uh, throughout the 70s, I did quite a few things in between my own writing, which was with Roxy. Uh, I think it was a good way of keeping the flow, keeping... Uh, the sort of uh, records coming out, you know, it's a very good thing, good way of taking the pressure off your own writing, actually. Mm. And um, it's a long time since I did anything like that. It was ten years, in fact, since Jealous Sky was the last thing we did. That was with Roxy, um, an old song. So, what made you want to release an album of cover versions? Then, I mean, to take the sort of pressure off, uh, you mm -hmm. know, your own. Well, songs. I've been working on an album of my own songs, which should be out next spring. Uh, which is called Horoscope. A bit um, like buses now, isn't it? You know, when you're waiting for one, you know, one never comes, oh, and right, all of a sudden enough. there's loads. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, I hope I'll get back to that um, the 70s uh, prolific thing mm. uh, by maybe, you know, doing more records like this, because uh, it was very nice to do it again. It was like rediscovering a kind of interest which I'd forgotten about, mm. you know. Um, it's a very good way of broadening your repertoire and extending your range, you know, doing old songs. And it, it de depends how much of yourself you put into the rearranging of them. Mm. Um, it can be very interesting. It's, it's what you make of it, you know, like a lot of things. What was the criteria for choosing the songs that made it All so kinds of different reasons. Um, for instance, Will You Love Me Tomorrow, which is the next single. Um, I had a teenage crush on that record, you know, where you just lift it on again and again, and you don't want to stop hearing it. And um, so that it was the, both the song and the original recording by the Shirelles was fantastic. And I don't know, it was actually on my list on these foolish things of songs to do. Oh, really? 20 years ago. Then I didn't have the uh, courage of my convictions. I'm not sure why I didn't do it, but uh, I think I probably was a lot more confident now of doing a classic like that. Um, now that I know myself more, maybe, or know what I can do and can't do. I mean, you've said it about yourself, and it's been said about you that um, you're a perfectionist. You're a perfectionist. Well, I you. always deny it, really. I mean, I always think that you just don't like using that word of perfection, you know, like what is perfect, you know. Uh, you always think of something else you can do to something. But you just try to get it right, where you think you've got rid of anything you hate mm. <laughs> on, on the track, you know. So sometimes that takes takes a while, especially if you're trying to get um, get it to sound clear and good what's being played, uh, and you want it to be organic, because I've, I've turned away quite a lot with this album, away from ma machines, you know. We've got much more into people playing. We went back to 24 track, analog which is kind of a, a more basic way of working mm. you know and it, it really benefited from that and that's the way i want to work from now on again does it i mean i was going to say you know does it appeal to you to sort of just go in there and, and bash it down get that immediate oh yeah well we do, we've always we always do a bit of that it's, it's it's like the work you do afterwards um you do quite a bit of refining mm. and i think it pays off in the end um it means you can you can hear it years later and, and not get too kind of furious about it you know. <laughs> you've had a lot of um chart success over the years a lot of um critical acclaim as well i mean how do you measure success now for you oh, how do well, you define it what's you know success you've got to like it yourself that's what you really you know you you can only follow your own instincts on that um and usually when you're in the studio working on something over a fairly long period of time you you just don't really think of the outside world so much when it's finished though then you start really freaking out and worrying and you know saying oh it's five years since i had something out and so it was very uh, rewarding with this record when it, it did you know it's been doing very well um it's, it's had a good response from the people who like my work uh, uh, which is which is great you know? final question i understand there's a chance you might be working with um, george michael in the future on a project 
Oh, well, Trojan he, he song. Caught, yeah, he might well be um, writing a song for me, I think. But uh, I haven't heard it yet, so I don't know. It could or could not. I haven't said a lot of things, which may or may not. Uh, you haven't done that place. before. I mean, you, you know, would you be interested to do something like that? Have somebody else write and produce a song for you? Oh, I'm always open to things like to do new things. Yeah, I think you have to um, be kind of open to to change, you know, trying new things all the time.